Hamlet, Act 1, Scene 3. Enter Laertes and Ophelia, his sister. My necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, as the winds give benefit and convey is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet, and the trifling of his favour, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, the violet in the youth of primy nature, forward, not permanent, sweet, not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute. No more. No more, but so. Think it no more. For nature, crescent, does not grow alone in thews and bulk, but as this temple waxes, the inward service of the mind and soul grows wide withal. Perhaps he loves you now, and now no soil nor cortal doth besmirch the virtue of his will, but you must fear. His greatness weighed, his will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself, for on his choice depends the safety and health of this whole state, and therefore must his choice be circumscribed unto the voice and yielding of that body whereof he is the head. Then, if he says he loves you, it fits your wisdom so far to believe it as he in his particular act and place, may give his saying deed, which is no further than the main voice of Denmark goes withal. Then weigh what loss your honour may sustain if with too credent ear you list his songs, or lose your heart, or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered importunity. Fear it, Ophelia, fear it, my dear sister, and keep you in the rear of your affection, out of the shot and danger of desire. The chariest maid is prodigal enough if she unmask her beauty to the moon. Virtue itself escapes not calumnious strokes. The canker galls the infants of the spring too oft before their buttons be disclosed. And in the morn and liquid dew of youth, contagious blastments are most imminent. Be wary then, best safety lies in fear. Youth to itself rebels, though none else near. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But good my brother, do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst, like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and wrecks not his own reed. O oh, fear me not, enter Polonius. I stay too long, but here my father comes. A double blessing is a double grace. Occasion smiles upon a second leave. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard, for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory look, thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them unto thy soul with hoops of steel, but do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new-hatched, unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in, bear it that the opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Teach each man's censure, take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy, rich, not gaudy, for the 
apparel oft proclaims the man and they in france of the best rank and station are of a most select and generous chief in that neither a borrower nor a lender be for loan oft loses both itself and friend and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry this above all to thine own self be true and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man farewell my blessing season this in thee most humbly do i take my leave my lord the time invites you go your servants tend farewell ophelia and remember well what i have said to you tis in my memory locked and you yourself shall keep the key of it farewell exit laertes what is it ophelia he hath said to you so please you something touching the lord hamlet marry well bethought tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you and you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous if it be so as so tis put on me and that in way of caution i must tell you you do not understand yourself so clearly as it behooves my daughter and your honour what is between you give me up the truth he hath my lord of late made many tenders of his affection to me affection Pff, you speak like a green girl unsifted in such perilous circumstance do you believe his tenders as you call them i do not know my lord what i should think marry i'll teach you think yourself a baby that you have taken these tenders for true pay which are not sterling tender yourself more dearly or not to crack the wind of the poor phrase running it thus you'll tender me a fool my lord he hath importuned me with love in honourable fashion ay fashion you may call it go to go to and hath given countenance to his speech my lord with almost all the holy vows of heaven I springs to catch woodcocks i do know when the blood burns how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows these blazes daughter giving more light than heat extinct in both even in their promise as it is a making you must not take for fire from this time be somewhat scanter of your maiden presence set your entreatments at a higher rate than a command to parley for lord hamlet believe so much in him that he is young and with a large tether may he walk then may be given you in few ophelia do not believe his vows for they are brokers not of that dye which their investments show but mere implorators of unholy suits breathing like sanctified and pious boards the better to beguile this is for all i would not in plain terms from this time forth have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the lord hamlet look to it i charge you come your ways i shall obey my lord excellent